This video is sponsored by Slate Digital. When I first graduated from audio college, I worked at a number of studios across Toronto. I'm talking about the ones with the big consoles and racks packed full of outboard gear from the names you know and love. I remember taking a mix in Pro Tools and spreading it out across an SSL board, tweaking the built-in preamps, EQs, and dynamic section on each channel strip, patching in inserts, maybe a Neve EQ or a Distressor, or something else that was expensive, and being in absolute awe of the tones I could get from each one. This worked workflow was very different from what I was used to at the time, which was working in the box with a DAW and digital plugins. Not that being in the box is bad, it's just different. But I learned that approaching mixes this way forced me to rely on my ears to make decisions and not what I'm seeing on the screen. And that's the magic of Slate Digital's virtual mix rack plugin. They've been able to emulate the same wonder and magic that I'd get when working with expensive analog gear at these fancy studios. That approach of relying on my ears while moving knobs and making my music sound phenomenal. So in today's video, I'm going to be using Slate Digital's virtual mix rack to build a vocal chain from start to finish. To begin, let's play this track and I'm going to do an A-B comparison. I'll take the vocal chain out and I'll play it and then I'll put the vocal chain in and let you compare and you should hopefully have a good understanding of how this vocal chain is really going to improve the quality of your own vocal sound. Let's do that together right now. I know what's involved, you can tell you don't Think you know it all but you got a long way to go you just want what you don't have Not thinking about what you do Spend so much time focused on it Instead of thinking about your next move And me and thinking about my next move I gotta do what I gotta do On everything I put it all on that I got plans I'm trying to execute Take a risk while you see you stew Cause you know that this isn't for you Doing nothing yet, put it all on that you Gotta switch if you wanna show and prove I know what's involved You can tell you don't Think you know it all but You got a long way to go you just want what you don't have Not thinking about what you do Spend so much time focused on it Instead of thinking about your next move And me, I'm thinking about my next move I gotta do what I gotta do On everything I put it all on that I got plans I'm trying to execute Take a risk while you see you stew Cause you know that this isn't for you Doing nothing yet, put it all on that. You gotta switch if you wanna show and prove. Quite a significant difference. You can hear how dark and less articulate the vocal sounds, especially in context when I don't have the vocal chain in. But the second that I put this thing in, it just comes up, it's louder, it's clearer, it's fuller, and it's obviously mitigating some of the problems. This recording is not perfect, and that's actually a good thing for you guys, because I'm sure a lot of you do not have perfect recordings yourself. Even I, to this day, am not perfect every single time, but always it's about the performance and what you're trying to get out, and less about how you're recording it. Of course, you want to record it well, but sometimes when the vibe is right and you're just trying to get something done, you're going to end up dealing with certain problems, and I'm no exception to that. So hopefully with this vocal chain and this step-by-step -step strategy, you're going to see how I solve some of these problems and bring up the overall sound to where we like it together. So let's talk about the first plugin that I have in this vocal chain, and that is a preamp, because a preamp specifically is going to add some character and harmonic content to a sound before I even go ahead and start processing it further. And the real reason why I want to do this is because I'm specifically using a very digital vocal chain. I have no analog pieces in this scenario. And obviously that could be cool because it's very sterile and clean, but we also want to add a little bit of character and warm up a sound in particular. So I'm using Slate's virtual channel here, and I specifically have it set to the USA mode, and I'm just driving my input. And the thing I like about this plugin is as you increase the input of a signal, it's going to compensate by backing off on the output. What that does is it's essentially going to add some more harmonics and add a little bit of drive to the signal, which will basically just fatten it up and make it sound a little bit richer in comparison to not having this in. Everything else I've essentially left to where it needs to be, but I'm really just pushing this input. So really quickly, let's just see what this sounds like with and without. I know what's involved. You can tell you don't. Think you know it all, but you got a long way to go. You just want what you don't have. Not thinking about what you do. Spend so much time focused on it. Instead of thinking about your next move. And me, I'm thinking about my next move. I gotta do what I gotta do on everything I put it all on that I got plans I'm trying to execute so you can hear how it's really warming things up and it's also great because I can then use this as almost like an additional level control here right I could obviously set my individual level on my track itself but then I could use this to sort of blend things a little bit more intricately especially as I'm going to be gain staging it to the next set of plugins on this list second in the chain is a gate and I'm using the gate classic from slate here and I'm basically using this to just do a little bit of housekeeping if you 
you notice when I played this vocal, there was certainly some noise in between my vocal performances. And not only that, you can actually hear just certain problems. I think I might have bumped the mic at one point. This is stuff that's obviously going to happen whether you're recording yourself or even recording with a vocalist. When people are performing, they're not always aware of their surroundings and they might be moving, there might be rustling, and this gate is going to help mitigate and reduce that. So I've set up this gate in particular to essentially clamp down on those quieter moments when I'm not performing the vocal. And when that happens, you're going to hear that this vocal is essentially going to mute and not be heard, not be audible. But then the second that the vocal is loud enough to pass this input peak slash threshold that I've set here, you're going to start to hear it. And again, this is going to help clean up some of the issues that we're having with the performance. Here we go. Check this out. I know what's involved. You can tell you don't think you know it all, but you got a long way to go. You just want what you don't have. Not thinking about what you do. Spend so much time focused on it. Instead of thinking about your next move. Let me think about my next move. I gotta do what I gotta do. On everything I put it all on that. I got plans I'm trying to execute. Take a risk while you see you stew. Cause you know that this isn't for you. Doing nothing yet, put it all on that. You gotta switch if you wanna show and prove. You can hear it's really clamping down on those problematic moments, those breaths, that movement, the mic bump, things like that. And it's just gonna tighten everything up so that way when we go into the next steps, we can actually just focus on enhancing what you actually hear being the vocal. Now the third plugin in the chain is filters and subtractive EQ. So I'm actually using the custom series equalizer in this case, and I'm really focused on using the filters first, the high pass and the low pass filter. However, I can also go in if I feel a need to with these other bands to clean things up and remove any problematic resonances that might rear their ugly head. However, this step is really focused on the filtering more than anything. So all I'm going to be doing here is playing this and sweeping the filter up and down until I can find a place where I'm just losing a little bit of the stuff that I don't necessarily want. In this case, I want to get rid of some low end because low end is responsible for muddiness and boominess. However, we can't be going too crazy here because if we push it too far, you're going to end up with a thin vocal. So in this case, this is really, really sub low end. So it's not really going to be stuff that's affecting the vocal. However, if I was going higher to like 150, 200, that's where we're going to start hearing this thinning of the vocal happening. So I'm getting rid of about 80 hertz and below. And then on the top end, I'm being very, very delicate. I'm just trying to get rid of the very, very top end, say 18, 19, maybe even 20K. So the extreme top end, the air band, really. And I'm doing that just to reduce any potential mouth clicks that might be happening on the recording. It might also also help mitigate some of the S's and the sibilants. We're going to be talking more about this in a future step as well, but just help treat some of these problems that are happening before we start going in even deeper with more surgical EQ. Let's see how much of a difference this EQ makes. I'm going to take it out and put it in. I know what's involved. You can tell you don't think you know it all, but you got a long way to go. You just want what you don't have. Not thinking about what you do. Spend so much time focused on it. Instead of thinking about your next move. Let me think about my next move. I gotta do what I gotta do. On everything, I put it all on that. I got plans I'm trying to execute. Take a risk while you see you stew. Cause you know that this isn't for you. Doing nothing yet, put it all on that. You gotta switch if you wanna show and prove. It's kind of imperceptible in a way. It feels very natural and subtle, but at the same time, when I'm doing this AB comparison, it's pretty noticeable. It's definitely a lot more low end information that's causing a little bit more of this bloated, muddy feeling. So the high pass or the low cut in this case is definitely helping clear that up. This higher cut that we've done here, this low pass filter here, is not necessarily doing as much. It's really just getting rid of the excessive high end, which there isn't a whole lot of because the vocal chain I'm using is pretty dark. However, I like to just take these filters and sculpt things a little bit more. Now, I don't really like to go in with an EQ at this stage just yet. However, if you have a very glaring problem, like an excessive amount of low end or a really harsh higher frequency, well, maybe it would make sense to go in and do just a slight cut to start to pre-treat this area before you go in even deeper. However, I like to limit this step particularly to filtering, but if it makes sense to do some subtractive EQ here, definitely feel free to do that as well. Next in the chain is compression. And we're really just using this compression to even out the dynamics of the vocal performance. There's going to be quieter moments and there's going to be louder moments. And we ultimately want to bridge the gap between them. So they're both easier and more perceptible to someone listening, especially on smaller listening devices. I find compression really helps a vocal sound just cut more on a smaller device like a laptop speaker or earbuds, etc. So we're using this here to just shave off the excessive peaks. And then at the same time, adding volume to the stuff that's not loud enough to get compressed. I'm specifically 
specifically using the FG2A compressor. This is very reminiscent of an opto style compressor like the LA2A, very famous compressor. And I like using these on vocals in particular because they have a very smooth sound. They typically have a slower attack and release time. And that lends itself very well to compressing vocals in particular. I'm gonna play this and pay attention particularly to the gain reduction meter here. You're gonna see we're ticking somewhere between one to three dB every time it's too loud. And at the same time, I'm adding a good amount of gain to compensate for what we are losing, which is making the sound more consistent and easier to hear. I know what's involved. You can tell you don't think you know it all, but you got a long way to go. You just want what you don't have. Not thinking about what you do. Spend so much time focused on it. Instead of thinking about your next move, let me think about my next move. I gotta do what I gotta do. On everything I put it all on that. I got plans for trying to execute. It's definitely making things more consistent. The quieter phrases are definitely a little bit more challenging to hear or make out. Maybe not now when I'm listening in solo mode. But when I put this into context, those moments are definitely gonna get lost and buried and be less articulate. So this compressor is helping bring them out, make them a lot more noticeable, a lot more audible and clearer to the end listener. Next in the chain is EQ. And I'm specifically gonna be using this to add and enhance certain frequencies that are a part of the vocal sound. But this could also be a good place to go in and reduce any problematic spots as well. Now I'm using the FGN. This is a British style EQ, very reminiscent of something like a 1073 from Neve. It's a little bit different, of course, but it's inspired by that, as you can tell by the aesthetic here. And what I've done here is I've just gone in and added a few particular frequencies and also taking away from a few areas as well that I feel like we needed to clean up. I'm adding almost 2 dB here on the high band, and I love the way that these Neve style EQs sound. They almost sound like glass. They can add a lot of high end, but without totally becoming brittle and too much. At the same time, we are adding a little bit around 3000 here. This is a main fundamental of a vocal and boosting this area is great if you want to have a more intelligible and present vocal as well. So I'm doing that just under a dB in this particular scenario. Now I did find that this was getting a little bit too harsh, maybe honky in a way. So I wanted to obviously tame a little bit between one and 2K. And in this case, I'm getting rid of just over one dB. Very slight maneuver as you could tell overall for all of these. And finally in the low band, I am actually adding just a smidge at 110. So this is going to just reinvigorate some of that boominess and warmth that we're getting. And the reason why I'm doing this as well is because I am using a filter here and I'm filtering upwards of 120 hertz, which is pretty significant. So I'm kind of getting rid of some stuff, but then I'm making back for it here. So let's play this real quick and see the difference. I know what's involved. You can tell you don't think you know it all, but you got a long way to go. You just want what you don't have. Now I think about what you do. Spend so much time focused on it. Instead of thinking about your next move, let me think about my next move. I gotta do what I gotta do. On everything I put it all on that. I got plans for trying to execute. Take a risk while you sit in your stew. Cause you know that this isn't for you. Doing nothing yet, put it all on that. You gotta switch if you wanna show and prove. Definitely just opening this up, right? Definitely more high end, definitely less muddy, less boomy, less of that low stuff that could just be holding this vocal back from sounding as clear as it should be. And I'm definitely liking how this is affecting the vocal, but also in a very subtle way. So just using this EQ after the compression to further sculpt the sound is gonna be key here. Now, something that always seems to come up when you start to push high frequencies with vocals is you start to run into harshness, especially around sibilance. And this is a great time to start queuing up something like a de -esser. Now, a de can really fit into a number of different places depending on the moves and of the quality of your vocal. I always recommend that you place the de wherever the problem presents itself. I will sometimes put the de at the very beginning of the chain, but other times I'll put it towards the end after an EQ move like what we just did here. It really depends on when that S becomes really noticeable noticeable, and not only S's, but of course T's, CH's, and any other kind of sibilance that might be problematic. That being said, this is a great time to talk about Slate Digital's latest plugin, the FGDS Model 902. It's modeled after the famous DBX hardware unit of a similar name, and of course this is unique to Slate, it's their own plugin, but it does function in a very similar way, and it's different from a lot of other DSers out there. Now, what I like to do here is I like to actually set my range pretty aggressively, somewhere between 7 to 10 dB, but maybe even higher than that and I'll leave all my other parameters where they are and I will then play this track and I'm going to sweep around the frequency and as I sweep around I'm going to be trying to find the exact place where the S or the sibilance lives. It's going to depend on the vocalist but I do find it's usually somewhere between four and seven thousand but let's actually just play this and I'll show you exactly what frequency I'm taming here.
So there's a few moments there. And of course, I didn't want to play the full thing because it's really just grabbing the S's in this particular case. And you can hear it's like what's involved. I could tell you don't, right? I'm saying certain things that are definitely S's, T's, C's. And this is working to then reduce those problematic spots. So now let's actually hear this in context. I know what's involved. You can tell you don't. Think you know it all, but you got a long way to go. You just want what you don't have. Not thinking about what you do. Spend so much time focused on it. Instead of thinking about your next move. So you can see the gain reduction meter here is lighting up whenever there's an S or a T or a CH or anything that falls into this frequency, which is close to that 4,000, like I said, about 3.74K here. We're definitely taming these problematic spots when they come up. And then anything that doesn't fit into this area here is not being affected. Now, after the de I like to include some sort of saturation to round out the chain. It's going to essentially create additional harmonic content in the higher end, and that'll allow this vocal to just feel fuller, sound fuller, sound thicker, and also cut on smaller listening devices basically increases the perceived loudness and that'll allow your vocal to be way more clear to the person listening. However, you definitely don't wanna push it with these devices because as you push a saturation device, you might end up running into some distortion. I like to actually keep it clean and not have this be such a noticeable difference, but really be something that is subtle. For me right now, I'm using the FG76 preamp here from Slate. Now saturation comes in many different forms. You can use a preamp like I am, you can use a distortion, you could use an actual saturator the list goes on and on but I like to use the preamps because slate does the preamps really well and they definitely add a lot of characteristics to the track that you're applying it to it's pretty simple two knobs in this case I'm just increasing the virtual drive to create some of those harmonics that I talked about and to fatten up the sound but as I do this again we might run into this issue where we're becoming too loud we start to clip so I'm backing off on my trim the trim is ultimately reducing the volume of the overall signal and that's going to balance it out and not have this be so heavy-handed and noticeable or potentially lead to some of those problems like clipping. Let's play this and see what kind of difference this preamp is making. I know what's involved. You can tell you don't think you know it all, but you got a long way to go. You just want what you don't have. Not thinking about what you do. Spend so much time focused on it. Instead of thinking about your next move. And me, I'm thinking about my next move. I gotta do what I gotta do. On everything, I put it all on it. I got plans I'm trying to execute. Take a risk while you sing your stew Cause you know that this isn't for you Doing nothing yet, put it all on that You gotta switch if you wanna show and prove so it's a very subtle difference, but I do find that it's just rounding out the low end in particular. You can hear how the low end is really poking out when I don't have this in, but when I put this in, it's still keeping it there and present, but it's kind of rounding it out, making it feel a little bit warmer, a little bit smoother. And then at the same time, it's adding some of these higher end harmonics. That's just making it sound pleasing. I like these plugins because ultimately whatever you feed into it, it's going to create harmonics based on that. And to build on that, if you want to see another rap vocal chain idea that I did, click the car that you're going to see on screen right now now check that out it's going to be showing you a lot of things that are similar to this but there are some key differences and i think it's worth a watch if you want to see an entire vocal chain from start to finish please smash that like button till it turns blue and if you're new here please consider subscribing to the channel in fact don't consider just subscribe so you can see my helpful content right when it goes live i'm looking forward to helping you guys again on the next one peace Five.